This episode of The Young Turks brought to you by Squarespace. Dominique Strauss-Kahn is the head of the IMF. He's also was the leading candidate in the upcoming French elections. Uh, he's socialist. He's uh, opposed to Sarkozy, who's the current president and, and is a conservative. And he was apparently leading Sarkozy in the polls. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, sex scandal. Now, he was uh, arrested over the weekend. He was at a Manhattan hotel, Sofitel. And he apparently, according to the allegations, cornered a 32-year-old cleaning lady uh, from the Bronx and uh, forced himself upon her. He came out naked, according to the charges. And uh, first, uh, he got her into the bedroom, and he apparently uh, tried to remove her underwear. It was not successful, but he uh, forced oral sex upon her. That is what the allegations are. Okay. Now, if those are true, it is heinous, despicable. Obviously, he is done. Okay. Not only is he done politically, who cares? He's going to jail, right? And he should go to jail for a long time if he tried to do that, right? Now. Some are a little skeptical about this. Now, why are they skeptical? Well, you know, there's the theories about, oh, you know, Sarkozy wanted to get him. There was already media outlets in France who were, uh, you know, who had turned on him and were trying to plant these stories about how he was sexually promiscuous. He was known as the great seducer. And so even Nouriel Roubini, which is a very, very respected economist, uh, wrote uh, a tweet, <laughs> funny enough, on this saying it was a setup. Now. That seems a bit much. We don't have enough information either way to know, right? Uh, and my first instinct is, why would this woman make it up? That, that sounds crazy, right? Uh, on the other hand, uh, when you look at the defense, and that's why you have to be careful here. Don't make any assumptions on either side. Uh, first, they say he has an alibi. Uh, they say that he was at lunch with his daughter. Now, it could be true, or it could be that this happened right before the lunch with his daughter. Okay. Now, there are a couple of fishy parts. The authorities said he ran for the hills. Uh, he got out of there in a panic, and he left his cell phone behind, but we tracked him down uh, at JFK airport, and we pulled him off the flight uh, right before he was going to take off to go back to France, or back to Europe. Um, okay, except the flight was booked a long time ago. So how panicked could he have been <laughs> that he booked it you know, days ago? No, that doesn't make any sense. And so they say, aha, he left, he's so penny, he left his phone behind. But he called the hotel and said, I think I left my phone, can you send it to JFK? If he thought the cops were chasing him, he probably wouldn't tell them where they were. So that part of the story sounds totally fishy to me, but that, that doesn't mean he's innocent, right? It could be that they just got carried away and said, uh, oh, he's running when he wasn't running. Um, and then they said that he was in a $3,000 hotel room. And that made me mad right off the bat because I thought, Look, the IMF shouldn't be paying bureaucrats $3,000 a night for their hotel rooms. But then you find out later, no, it wasn't really $3,000. Some are now saying it's $500, and it wasn't really the IMF paying, it was him paying. Well, that makes it entirely different. It started to raise a couple of red flags for me. Like, why are they, you know, in, why do they have all these details ready to be embellished, right? Like, they're throwing that out there, all the little things to make you hate them. Right? Oh, he's rich. He's stealing your money from the IMF. He was corrupt before, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then I start to think, ah, let's find out more about this. Um, now here comes the interesting part, right? And by the way, I'm, let me repeat: do not take anything I'm saying as being for or against them. I have no idea. That's why you do trials, okay? Uh, I, you know, you have to see all the evidence. I mean, we don't know that woman from. Adam or from Eve. So uh, she could absolutely be telling the truth. No question about it. Or is there something else at play? Well, here's the uh, interesting thing that Strauss Kahn himself said to a French paper a couple of weeks ago. He talked about how he might get set up. And he said, uh, uh, he posed a hypothetical. For, he said, for example, a woman who I supposedly raped in a car park and who had been promised $500,000 or a million euros to invent such a story. Like that could happen to him. Now, look, you say, whoa. You know, my grandmother would say, whoa. If people are looking to set him up and he thinks they're looking to set him up, and he says, look, this something like this could happen, and then something very similar to that happens, you go, oh. On the other hand, if he knows he's been up to shenanigans, he throws that quote out there like, oh, they're looking to set me up. You know what I'm saying? To cover his tracks? I don't know. That's why it's a fascinating case. And uh, when asked about uh, 
the different sexual situations he's found himself in. By the way, he slept with subordinates before he was cleared on that. Uh, they said it was regrettable what he did, right? But there was no uh, allegations of force. But now another woman uh, from 2002, I believe, came out and said, yes, he did something very similar to me. And my mom, who was in the Socialist Party, talked me out of uh, you know, bringing up charges back then against him. So here we go, right? Uh, but uh, when asked about the other women, he said, I like women. So what? For years, there's been talk of photos of a giant orgy, but I've never seen them come out. Again, it's like, uh, he doesn't say they didn't happen. He says, I've never seen them come out, right? So I don't, I have no idea. I have no idea. But look, the last thing on why I'm even questioning this, because, you know, nine out of 10 times, somebody's not going to make up something like this. Maybe more than that, right? Why would they? That's, that's my initial instinct. I think that's probably everybody's initial instinct. But every time it's somebody who's powerful that goes down, it's a sex charge. It is a fascinating case. All I'm saying is, reserve judgment no matter what side you're on. You like them, don't think it's definitely a setup. That's crazy to think that, right? If you don't like him, don't think, oh, he's definitely guilty. That's also crazy. We, that's, that's why we gotta have the evidence and that's why we gotta decide at the end, uh, you know, when, when it goes to, if it goes to trial and when it goes to trial. All right. But it, look, the reason that it's very important is it could be the decide who's the leader of France. It could decide who is, you know, which direction the European Union goes because he's very influential there. And then finally, look, the IMF is involved with a lot of decisions and a lot of decisions that involve banks. And that's the final red flag for me. Every time there's a bank involved, and remember Julian Assange got the sex charges only after he said he was going to release the files on the banks. Every time there's a bank involved, all of a sudden there's a sex charge, right? Kind of makes you go, hmm, that's why I don't know. If you want to build a website or a blog, where do you go? You go to Squarespace.com. With Squarespace, you don't need any coding experience, and the best part is you can even edit your website on your iPhone. They give you 24-7 support. Go to Squarespace.com slash TYT and get a two-week trial for free.